Welcome to Bedroom Forensics. Today we're talking d -d digital, talking cyber forensics. And no, not that terrible CSI spin off. That was just uh, awful. Sorry, Patricia Arquette, I love you. Anyway, digital slash cyber slash computer forensics really came into its own over the no 90s and noughties and was developed to combat the spread of child pornography online. And of course, it's always to do with money. The fraud teams at the UK's Inland Revenue Service pushed for more data analysis. And so, ba ba ba, in the UK in 1998, the Association of Chief Police Officers produced the first version of its Good Practice Guide for Digital Evidence, which details the main principles applicable to all digital forensics for law enforcement in the UK. Now, in the US in 2006, the United States Rules for Civil Procedure was overhauled to implement a mandatory regime for electronic discovery. So everyone's on board. What are the main principles of computer forensics? Well, it's the minute investigation of computer files and the tracking and the movement of those files, as well as the hijacking of sites and the sites that people visit. Now, as most people know, well, well at least they now know, Deleted files are never deleted. Software has been developed, though, to shred files, and then blockchains have been developed to try and stop that. But as the new tech develops, it can be really tough for a computer forensic expert. Hmm. But thankfully, not every criminal is a hardcore hacker, and they don't have time to run program after program to get rid of their backtrack or even outsource to another country. So usually experts are frequently one step ahead, but who knows what the future will bring. Now, just to be clear, although I am using the term computer crime, it doesn't just refer to your laptop or your desktop. It covers mobile and cloud technology. Now the modern world relies heavily on storing data, including personal details, as well as some really sophisticated government security measures. There are many things on your phone or laptop that you may not even know are there and they are collecting your data and your responses. You may not have opened that spam email because you know about phishing, but sophisticated hackers can get through your games too. And it's not always about stealing your identity. They can replace it, take your money, manipulate your data, track your movement. It's kind of scary when you think about it. And honestly, don't get me started on plans by certain platforms to stop or delete any posts they deem negative or false through automated AI tools. That gets me going, but that's a chat for the pub when we can return their ops. Anyway, so although digital experts are pretty reactive to the changes in software, they're always looking on ways to improve. Of course, though, it's crimes in investigation, so there's always going to be a process that has to be followed in every crime scene. So we can kind of break it down into the following five stages. There's identification. The first stage identifies potential sources of relevant evidence slash information. It's usually the devices and who owns them and the location of the data. Two, <laughs> preservation. The process of preserving the electronically stored information. So that could be protecting the crime scene or capturing visual images of the scene and making sure you document it, all the information down about how it was acquired. Someone threw a phone, took a picture of where the phone fell. Collection three, collecting digital information that may be relevant to the investigation. Now this could involve removing the device from the crime scene and then going into it taking photos, copying it or printing out the relevant content or getting someone to look at, say, for example, the text messages. Four, <laughs> analysis. So that's a depth, that's deep systematic research of evidence relating to the incident. The output of examination of data, objects found in the collected information. So these could be including the user generated files, like sending the text message and then receiving the text messages and finding your conclusions based on that found. And then finally, reporting. Reports are based on the proven techniques and methodology that's used for different forces. And it should be that competent forensic examiners are able to duplicate and reproduce the same results. Now, there is a lot more to this than those five stages, and that's really basic. 
but we use guidelines and best practice and that comes under the forensic science regulator here in the UK and of course as I've already mentioned the process continues to evolve but at most crime scenes it's your basic walkthrough you see a phone take a picture of the phone pick up the phone look in the phone analyze the phone and then report on it most crime scene investigation is a basic A to Z process and that's what we make sure that if we have to go to court and show that evidence that we can tell exactly what, when we did something and at what point. Right, well that's very very simplified for digital forensics slash cyber forensics slash computer forensics. Of course as I mentioned there are a lot more in depth to it and if you're a software expert then you know what this could be potentially the job for you but until then i'm gonna leave you with this and i hope you enjoyed it so uh, please do subscribe if you do and hopefully i will see you next time